as far as thinking about solutions. So definitely having that visibility or clarification on how guns are getting into the wrong hands. One comment that came up quite a lot in the survey was about Project Exile and the success that that had years ago. Are there any other solutions that we can start talking about to make sure that the wrong people don't get access to guns? I think the question is, who do you consider the wrong person? Um, obviously, our society has decided that if you are a felon, you should not be able to possess a gun. However, a lot of the crime that happens in Richmond is committed by juveniles who are not felons, or adults who are not felons, or people who have access to guns because you can go on Amazon and buy a gun for $500. Um, you can go to a friend's house and say you need to borrow their piece and do what you want to do and then bring the piece back or throw it in the James River. Uh, and so the issue is not that we need necessarily more laws restricting the purchase of firearms in, as the chief of police said, um, in, in a place that uh, is a registered firearms dealer. The issue is how do you keep guns off the street from people who are buying those guns off the street? Anybody else want to weigh in on that? So um, is, is Project Exile, is that something that, that people are talking about in terms of bringing it back? Chief, do you know, was that something that partnering with the, the, the federal agencies, appropriate ones, does that have an impact? Because obviously there are questions about civil, civil liberties uh, and, and that certain communities are affected more than others. What, what's your take on that? Well, certainly the, those laws are, are still in place. Uh, regardless of what's called. It, but if you're a convicted felon in possession of a firearm, you can be charged in state court or the federal system. Every gun arrest we make is evaluated by a team of detectives and the Commonwealth Attorney and the U.S. Attorneys to decide what's the appropriate venue for it. So I think that's just a, a piece of the puzzle. Um, but to, to Ms. McEachin's point, many of our shooters are people who have easy access to firearms with low impulse control and when we look at our, our murders and we look at our non-fatal shootings most of them are over disputes when i started in the 90s and brian was was in richmond as an atf agent most of our shootings were related to drug turf when richmond was the murder capital of the country in 1994 with 160 murders uh, that's what it was about they were protecting territory I, you know jimmy and i were at the university of richmond in the 90s and every night i would watch the news and there'd be blood on the streets in this city while I'm at University of Richmond and I didn't see that there, but, but I saw the images of our city with blood on the streets and thankfully we're not at that place now. But just two years ago, in, in 2021, we had 90 murders in our city. We almost reached triple digits again and, we, and it's, my, uh, it's, it's my commitment to this city that we're never gonna get to that point again and we're gonna do it through smart policing through working with our partners and by, and by making sure that we utilize the strategies in, 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 um, in collaboration with our community members to, uh, to avoid that. 